Hi everyone, very good evening guys. I hope I am audible and visible to all of you. And uh, this is obviously the last session that we have before the INI CET exam. So I decided to take up both the subjects together in a single session that will save up on time and energy for a lot of you also. And also this is an add-on session to the sessions that we had recently had. So I'm not going to repeat the images and what we had just now discussed on the platform say about 10 days ago. I'm going to give you something little extra and also uh, probably something from gut feeling. Now a lot of you had told me that you know you want uh, life cycle and eggs and all those things to be discussed in micro so we are definitely going to take up those as well but uh, I have divided this session into an 80-20 what is 80-20 because I wanted to total it up to 100 so 80 are going to be the one-liners that I've got and this is going to be a mixed bag from path and micro so these are the one-liners and in the end 20 are going to be the different images of the eggs because you know you have to identify go through them quickly scan through them and of course quick we are going to go through the life cycles also. So that's your 80-20 that we are going to do. We'll try to wrap up this session. I've thought of a 1 hour 15 minutes but let's see as, as rapid as what we can. I don't want to stretch too long because you have an exam coming up. On that note, I think we can start and as someone asked me for words of motivation, those will come alongside. This is going to be a 1 hour journey of ups and downs just like how your journey of INI preparation has been. So we are going to have words of motivation alongside. We'll get some answers right. Those are obviously going to be motivating for us. We'll get some answers wrong. We'll pass through them and we'll automatically fight our way through, right? Okay, let's get going and um, right, as I said, get set, go. So we start with something that came in the last exam. What is the role of certuins? Now to save on time, I have a lot of things which are already written so that we don't waste any even one second. Every second out here is precious. So at any point of time you feel that ma'am, you've just gone like a, you know, like a rail and you're just not stopping, you can let me know. I can lower the pace a little, but I want it to be rapid because you have an exam and we don't want to stretch it unnecessarily. Let's get going. So yes, what are the role of certuins? We all know ABCD. What is ABCD, guys? Number one, it's going to help in anti-aging. That's the main role. Second, it's coming across in the treatment of cancers and also in the treatment of diabetes. The question that came is, why does it use or why is it being used in the treatment of diabetes? Because, of course, it going, it's going to increase the insulin sensitivity. Anything that increases insulin sensitivity will be used in the treatment of diabetes, right? What other question came in the exam that what exactly are sirtuins? So, we know that sirtuins are a set of enzymes. What enzymes? This is a PYQ. They are histone deacetylases. And how many genes in our body? Very simple. CERT ke liye CERT you win. So CERT 1 to 7 genes are gonna be used. So this is sorted. This was your one question of previous INI CET. So this is done. Tick mark. Next one liner let's go to. What is Werner syndrome? I think everyone knows Werner syndrome is one of those progeria wala syndromes. But is it adult progeria or childhood progeria? It's an adult progeria syndrome. So the P PYQ that had come was that what is the defect that you see over here? Very, very good as we all have. DNA helicase defect. Very good. Excellent. It's a DNA helicase defect. PYQ of NEAT PG 2019. Much, much expected in INI also. So, two one-liners done. Let's move on to the next three which are image-based one-liners and you know they are all-time favorite. These three Fancy, fancy photos are very important. Huh? So what are these granulomas? The first one, the granuloma that looks like these two parallel lines with dots inside it. It is the famous, famous. Dirk granuloma, which is the situation. Very good. Many of you have already started answering. Ma'am, Dirk granuloma is seen in Plasmodium falciparum. Basically, it's seen in the brain. It's a cerebral malaria condition. And now in INI, they will ask you, what is this blue color wala stain? So I hope you all remember F for F. That is for falciparum. The stain that we have is the field stain. Very good. The more that you answer, I'll know that I have to speed it up even more. So I know you know these answers already. Let's move on to the next one. What is this? The one that's looking like a donut out of the donut we all know that we just have to make a Q out of it so when I make a Q out of it it becomes a Q fever and we know Q fever is caused by Coxiella burnetti now tell me some microbio questions Coxiella belongs to that Rickettsia family but Rickettsia family means there will be some vector there will be some rash do you remember Coxiella is an exception where there is no vector and there is no rash there's no tick mite lice nothing involved no vector no rash that is what was Coxiella perfect 
you all remember coming to the third one it's in front of you yes so donut granuloma ho gaya now the third one is everyone's answered ma'am it's looking like a star so that becomes a stellate granuloma stellate granuloma is seen in two conditions what are those quickly we can write it down very good we are going to be having cat scratch disease and the other one is lymphogranuloma venereum tell me one extra question micro correlation lymphogranuloma venereum mein what is painful the genital ulcer is painful or the lymph node is painful so remember lymphogranuloma venereum mein it is the lymph node which you call as bubos that is the one that is going to have a lot of pain whereas the genital ulcer that we are talking about that is going to be painless very very good again i've got correct answers to theek hai ye correlation ho gaya lgv also shows you a stellate granuloma similarly cat scratch disease also shows you a stellate granuloma settled with this now let's move on to the next set of one liner surgery and patho mixture whatever you want to call it but you have to do fill in the blanks quickly fill in the blanks in 30 seconds and finish off this slide for me we are talking about a case of wound healing so tell me when does granulation tissue begin at what day does it begin and at what day does collagen begin so the trick of learning this always was very good whether ma'am anything beginning that will be asked granulation tissue begins it begins on day 3 collagen also begins on the same day very little amount but it has started on the third day only but when do they become maximum that's going to be different granulation tissue becomes maximum on day 5 and collagen becomes maximum on day 21 or in other words you can call it week 3 i hope that's okay so granulation tissue and collagen starting is 3 day 3 day maximum is 5 day and it's going to be 3 weeks now tell me collagen you know this was a previous 2 years old i and i ct question collagen formed in the beginning of the the repair is what type and collagen formed at the end of the repair is what type so starting may we have type 3 collagen and in the ending we have type 1 collagen why have we changed all of it to type 1 because type 1 is going to be the strongest collagen that we have in the body so remember what was the exam in i and i ct that at the end at the end what is the ratio between the two collagens which is more of course ma'am end may everything has come down to collagen 1 so if they ask you the ratio between collagen type 1 and collagen type 3 at the end what is it 4 is to 1 very very good so end may basically what we have is collagen 1 has become more right settled this is also done very good meanwhile other answers also i have got 100% wound strength kab aayega ma'am this answer to we remember in our sleep also 100% and bone strength is going to be never ever in this situation very good everyone's answered it so as you said 30 seconds mein khatam let's move on to the next set you all know this question also prada willi syndrome angel man aims exam inict favorite means i'm talking about genomic imprinting what is imprinted what is deleted what are the genes that i'm talking about so simple ma'am what is maternal what is paternal ka simple mnemonic kya tha prada willi was papa region deleted prada willi was papa region de4 deleted excellent so i know that prada willi will have paternal deletion and that automatically means that there's going to be maternal imprinting that is prada willi syndrome and angel man angel man you do it opposite so in prada willi if there was paternal deletion in angel man there will be maternal deletion and in prada willi if there was maternal imprinting then in angel man there is going to be paternal imprinting very good but common kya hai excellent i sometimes i feel we are working like telepathy you know what i'm going to ask you in both of them the chromosome involved is going to be 15 but the gene is different guys what is the gene for prader willi it is the snorp gene for prader willi it's the snorp gene and for angel man it is ube 3a gene look at the last alphabets snorp is ending with p prader willi is beginning with p ube 3a is ending with a and angel man is beginning with a so don't get confused because aims exam really likes to ask you not chromosome 15 it likes to ask you what gene on chromosome 15 is getting affected so that is also settled for all of us yes and meanwhile I've given you a validation that all of you have told me correct clinical features. I am with you on that. I won't repeat it because things that everyone knows and which are not very very important for INI we are not picking up, right? Chalo, this session, this thing is also done. Let's move on to the next one. You know polymerase chain reaction is there? 
all all time favorite one question that came in 2020 for pcr which is not written over here jaldi se bata do if they ask you what are the steps of polymerase chain reaction i hope you remember we have d a and e as the steps of polymerase chain reaction biochem question what are the three steps we have denaturation number one denaturation number two is going to be annealing and number three is going to be extension super intelligent students answers are coming in split seconds awesome so denaturation annealing and extension 2020 mein this was the question that we had meanwhile everyone was like ma'am we are one step ahead of you you have asked us which polymerase chain reaction will you use in this situation that is braf v600e i know exactly what to target if i know what to target i will be using sbpe single base primer extension i know single base that i have to target so what do you think is going to be the clinical history braf mutation ka हाँ होता है दिस एवरी वन नोज मैम ब्राफ म्यूटेशन के लिए दे विल प्रॉबली गिव मी प्रॉबली मोस्ट लाइकली दे लव टू गिव यू केसेस ऑफ हेरी सेल ल्यूकीमिया सो एच सी एल केस होगा दे विल से बिकॉज हंड्रेड परसेंट केसेज ऑफ हेरी सेल ल्यूकीमिया हैव दिस म्यूटेशन सो दे विल से वॉट इज द पी सी आर दैट यूल यूज यू नो दी आंसर नेक्स्ट इफ द सैम्पल इज वेरी लेस दे विल से कैंसर सेल्स आर ओनली एट परसेंट कैंसर सेल्स और टेन परसेंट कैंसर सेल्स वॉट आर यू गो नो यूज एवरी वन स्टार्टेड आस्किंग वेरी गुड दैट इज द आंसर दैट वॉज एक्सपेक्टिंग you will have to look out for the option out here look at this guys if they have written next generation sequencing that is much 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 better than a regular pcr always select ngs next generation sequencing but if that's not mentioned in the options then you will be men uh, using or you will be mentioning pyro sequencing so look at your options if ngs is mentioned ngs over anything on this planet is what you're going to mark over pcr but if that's not mentioned then you go for pyro sequencing coming to the third one you want to do some quantitative assessment like over here i have told you quantitative assessment of philadelphia chromosome cml ka case hai quantity you want to find out ma'am i will have to do some quantitative pcr what is quantitative pcr known as real time so they will not write quantitative pcr for quantity assessment they will write real time pcr so quickly tell me what were we doing for covid yes guys what were we doing for covid i think everyone remembers that for covid we were doing rrt pcr what is rrt pcr because ma'am one r you have told us is real time but one rt is reverse transcriptase exactly because it's an rna virus na covid or corona virus is an rna virus so we were doing rrt pcr combination of two pcrs were being done very good so your pcr questions also you've done you know if i've asked you pcr obviously ma'am is going to ask the favorite aims question that is what karyotyping 1 2 3 4 bullet four questions finish it in 30 seconds move ahead with me karyotyping i have shown you a normal karyotype here i have shown you some fluorescent fluorescent stuff over here so quickly tell me and what phase do we do it ye to kindergarten question hai this phase of karyotyping is of course going to be a meta phase of course what is the fixative fixative questions you know i and i people love fixative questions i'm going to make you solve a few fixative questions in a while for the time being what is the fixative over here? so for car yo we have car noy examiner writes things like car ne car ni really tries to confuse you out here be very clear with your concepts you have car yo car yo so car noy fixative is what is going to be used very good now what is this we are being asked car noy fixative has what all it has methanol and it has glacial acetic acid and in what ratios please save up on time very good everyone told me 3 is to 1 how did you learn it c is the third alphabet a is the first alphabet ho gaya 3 is to 1 is the ratio done next aims mein hota hai actually karyotyping is done in all the central institutes that is why they ask you so much of karyotyping in inict what is the most common banding the most common banding is g banding so the most common one is jimsa banding and we had studied g banding jimsa garib garib matlab garib wala microscope most common garib wala microscope light microscope whereas if i ask you some fancy microscope like fluorescent microscope you can see for fluorescent i have not used something garib i have used something very fancy and what is that fancy stuff that fancy stuff is q banding queen or queen banding hai na queen ke liye something fancy you need and jimsa is garib for that you need light microscope all of them are pyqs
is that okay let's move forward you know the next thing that i'm gonna ask you have to have to be these set of tumor markers again the oncology or oncopath section will always be a little heavier in the exam because oncopath is a very very upcoming branch as all of you know so jaldi se let me know all of these guys alpha fetoprotein you know one has to be gynae question yolk sac tumor obviously has to be there yes what other than that how will they ask you in surgery there are two liver tumors that they ask you one of them is hepatocellular carcinoma and one of them is hepatoblastoma so yolk sac tumor hcc and hepatoblastoma for alpha fetoprotein carcinoembryonic antigen there are a lot of tumors tell me that one tumor coming to your mind most importantly most importantly i will always think of colon cancer after that of course there's stomach cancer also there is lungs pancreas so many of them but colon cancer has to has to come to my mind ca125 i'm not going to ask you of course it's going to be ovarian tumors but which ovarian tumors we all know they are surface epithelial tumors right ca99 again you know nine ko flip kara pancreatic cancer but anything else other than pancreatic cancer even colon cancer can show you ca199 but if you have to select the one best answer 9 flip p this will be your best answer this is a previous year question also but you know in ini they are giving you those multiple options wala questions also now you can pick up multiple uh, options so over there if you have both of these mentioned for ca199 be watch out for that right ca153 three looks like a b so you know you are now going to select breast cancer as the answer very good okay what is this nmp22 this is something which we don't usually study for fmg and neat but is important for ini ct 22 ma'am some cancer which has happened two two times do do bar cancer hua what is that two two times cancer remember recurrent recurrent bar bar recurrent bladder cancer recurrent bladder cancer nmp22 is what can be used as a tumor marker so do do bar wala cancer everyone's okay with this can i move forward i have to have to ask you a question on this even if you've read it 1 million thousand times so you have to know this what is the best stain for amyloid so just wrap it up just for a formality i have to ask you it's going to be congo red and i'm not going to write because we all know that it's going to give you an apple green color how will they ask me in ini cet why does it give you an apple green birefringence what is the reason for apple green birefringence that is because what is the structure guys the structure of amyloid is what it is going to be beta pleated sheet that is a question that they will ask you beta pleated sheets of amyloid gives it that double double refractive index by refringence how do you test for beta pleated sheets by what methodology i'll give you two options did you get to know via electron microscopy or did you get to know via x ray crystallography so this beta pleated sheets is known by x ray crystallography that's the question that you got in the paper so please note full sentence i'll repeat it in 10 seconds the best stain of amyloid is congo red congo red gives you an apple green birefringence on a polarizing microscopy why does it give you apple green birefringence because when i did an x ray crystallography i found out that the structure is made up of beta pleated sheets that is one sentence any question out of these can be asked but what is the stain for amyloid where i will have to utilize ultraviolet light again a previous year ini ct question and that is going to be ma'am we learn it in alphabets like t u v that means that when you're going in for thioflavin t so thioflavin t will require an ultraviolet light again that's a previous year question done everyone knows this perfect we can move forward and i can ask you something out of systemic path or medicine or whatever you may want to call it guess the particular cardiomyopathy and you don't even have to see this picture as soon as i mention alcoholic patient everyone knows what i'm talking about this is a classical case of dcm dilated cardiomyopathy but question kya aayega so either they are going to give you this kind of a uh, alcoholic patient theek hai if they don't give you an alcoholic patient what gene mutation do you want to pick up over here guys what is the genetics that they can give you they can come up with a titan gene mutation to dekho when i write about dcm there are only three scenarios that they will give you either they will say i don't know means actually the most common cause is idiopathic i don't know if they know the cause then that's going to be a case of alcoholism and if they want to tell you a genetics they are going to pick it up as 
Titan. And meanwhile, everyone told me, ma'am, this is the only image available on the entire internet and everywhere on this planet, these ninja stars. Yes, this dilated cardiomyopathy shows you the ninja star appearance. Do you remember how did we learn it? We had learned that after consuming alcohol, everyone feels that he's ninja. So after consuming alcohol, dilated cardiomyopathy, who a person started feeling, I am ninja hathodi, that famous cartoon that we used to watch. Theke? Chalo, this was one question settled and I hope you all know from uh, medicine, dilated means what chambers are getting dilated? All four chambers are getting dilated. Let's move on to the next question. You have to answer these two cardiac tumors. Again, I and I CT favorite cardiac tumors. They have to have to put on because no one else asks you cardiac tumors. So tell me. Yes, cardiac tumor with lepidic cells and cardiac tumor with spider cells. So lepidic cells, wala, what will you mark? You will mark it as you will mark it as myxoma. And remember that box we used to make and we used to write a mister like this. What was the mister? The myxoma occurs in which chamber? Myxoma occurs in left atria, correct. And which is the cardiac tumor with spider cells? Very, very good. That is going to be rhabdomyoma, this, this classical spider cell. Everyone can visualize it looks like a beautiful spider web. INI exam, one step ahead. Why is it looking like a spider? What are these empty spaces? What is the state? that you will pick up over here what are these empty spaces positive for they are pass positive so the spiders are positive for pass and what is the chamber you can see it over here the most common chamber that you'll have will be the left ventricle settled up how have you written m above r below so one is left atria one is left ventricle so the one that is above will occur in big people obviously the myxoma is gonna occur more commonly in adults and the one that is written chota saniche rhabdomyoma rhabdomyoma is gonna occur in children your full cardiac tumor thing is settled but if i ask you a simple quick jaldi five seconds what is the most common cardiac malignancy and then you answer none of these then you slash it all out because the most common cardiac malignancy is of course going to be metastasis we all know that anyway right chalo let's move on to the next one you know this question if it comes this time it's gonna be a hat trick and it's also gonna be a hat trick of this particular uh, year because it's been asked in your fmg it's been asked in neat and if it comes up in ini it's a hat trick for this year if it comes up in ini it's a hat trick for INIs also because you know markers of lung cancer are being asked back to back in some form or the other jaldi se make a list we'll keep a one minute target for this okay what is it squamous cell carcinoma we all know squamous cell carcinoma has keratin pearls so pearls ke saath p wala markers we had p40 we had p63 pp for pearls and i have told Told you this question it has come in the previous years INI exam which is the best marker for SCC that is P40 very good done adenocarcinoma ma'am everything had to have A and 1 in it what is A and 1 that is napsin A TTF 1 muc 1 all AA and 1 1 things had to come up perfect small cell carcinoma this remember small cell we used to say it sounds small but is like super deadly it had six markers what are these six markers ma'am first we will take up the short forms NSC CD 56 CD 57 teen short forms hai. and then there are three markers which are known as in 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 synaptophysin chromogranin bombicin so small cell carcinoma is nowhere small right NSC CD 56 CD 57 in 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 if these six markers come we know we are dealing with small cell carcinoma these were all cancers of the lung what about cancer of the pleura cancer of the pleura is mesothelioma can you tell me one very famous marker which i am personally expecting in this paper mesothelioma is positive for cal retinin cal retinin for mesothelioma very very important I don't know, I don't have any basis for telling you this gut feeling here that something about mesothelioma will be asked in the paper and you know which environmental exposure they're going to give up. There's no point me asking you that kuch to ma'am asbestos ka history hoga then mesothelioma and then they might ask you this marker for calretinin. Done with this as well. Let's move on to the next one. I don't know why am I going into this. It's like a, it's a very dead zone to go into. But as soon as I put up this, everyone wants to run away. Kidney, what deposit happens where? One of the most deadly things to learn, but we can't escape it. INI exam hai, padna padega. So you have to tell me where in the kidney, what is getting deposited. Rather than telling me like this, tell me like this. They will give you an image and they will tell you what is getting deposited where. Let's do, I like to finish off easy, easy things first. So what is getting deposited in the in-between areas in the 
these in between areas that is going to be the mesangium in the mesangium ma'am we have mesangium matlab beech beech mein middle middle and that is going to be the very famous Berger's disease and what is the other name for Berger's disease IgA nephropathy so basically IgA is getting deposited so simple mnemonic ho gaya middle middle mein beech beech mein between between areas we have Berger's settled now let's come to sub epithelium can you all see this can we all identify these podocytes sub epithelium below the podocytes podocyte feet I remember I, long back I don't know how many of you heard that session way back in Jan Feb we had a session on NEAT PG where I told you who is gonna touch the feet so you will say ma'am some chota bacha will touch the feet of a very elderly person that is how it is so some very chota bacha some pediatric bacha like post streptococcal glomerulonephritis occurs in bachas touches the feet of some very elderly person which is the nephrotic syndrome that happens in elderlies and that is membranous glomerulonephropathy so as I told you we have some very very chota bacha touching the feet of a very very old person and touching the feet will obviously tell me sub epithelial deposits are there settled now after that ye dono ho gaye ma'am jo bacha hai I'll just fit that around what am i left with i'm left with mpgn type 1 and i'm left with sle how can you forget sle also affects the kidneys right so remember sub endothelial deposits are seen in mpgn type 1 and sle sle mein kya lesion hota hai guys what is that famous lesion in the kidney that is known as the famous famous wire loop lesions i'm coming to that in exactly 5 minutes but that is sub endothelial now what am i left with only one thing that is mpgn type 2 mpgn type 2 is intramembrane that is why last question what is the other name for mpgn type 2 it is known as dense deposit disease where is that dense deposit happening that dense deposit is happening in the basement membrane quick revision for feet you will say one chota bacha touching the feet of an old person for mesangium middle middle mein kya hai beach beach mein that is going to be burgers everything else becomes <clears throat> sub endothelial which is mpgn1 as well as sle and then intramembranous becomes mpgn MPGN type 2. Are we settled with it? Right now you told me SLE. So why don't I show you a picture of SLE only? What lesions did I just now teach you? For lupus nephritis, I told you you're gonna see the famous wire loop lesions. Is this okay with everyone? You can visualize there is a wire loop. You can see some thickening that is happening over here, right? So yes, that looping that is taking place, that is the wire loop lesion. And now I don't have to ask you, wire loop cons are deposited. Ma'am, abhi abhi we studied that everything miscellaneous goes into subendothelial region. This is a subendothelial deposit. This is a case of SLE. How many classes of lupus nephritis do we have? We have total six classes. Seventh is on its way to the discovery. But abhi ke liye, the textbooks mention there are total six classes that I have. So please note, wire loop lesions are seen in class 3, 4 and 5. Wire loop lesions are seen in class 3, 4 and 5. But maximum wire loop lesions are seen in class 4. Maximum 4. And you know now how we had learnt it? We had learnt it, wire also has 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 alphabets. Loop also has 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 alphabets. The fourth wala number is the most common one where wire loop lesions are found what do you see on immunofluorescence i've got all the answers meanwhile it shows you the full house effect what is full house full house is house party i want i'm not writing it but house party means everyone that they say igg iga igm c1 c2 c3 all these complements all these immunoglobulins everything is going to come and have a deposition over here so it's a full get together full house party and what do you see on electron microscope someone who's never ever read also can identify this picture it's so classical it's looking like a thumbprint appearance exactly so thumbprint appearance is gonna be seen can you tell me one bacteria which shows you a thumbprint appearance just a very random offbeat question that I'm asking you yes any bacteria which can show you a thumbprint appearance uh, probably could come something known as whooping cough 100 days cough consa wala hai that is gonna be bordetella right thumbprint is seen with bordetella pertussis i said whooping cough so it had to be bordetella pertussis that is uh, i asked you okay many of you said epiglottitis and all i asked you on microscopy microbiology ka question tha na? so microscopically thumbprint appearance is gonna be seen in bordetella pertussis meanwhile i could see some doctor had asked me ma'am is this on 2x yeah this is on 2x because your exam is less than two days 
days away so my original speed is only 2x i just hope everyone's okay with it if you still anyone else who wants me to slow down a little i have no issues at all but i want it to be a little faster so that you guys can wrap up quickly i'm sure you've got a lengthy list of things of your own to complete this is not the only one that you have to go through and yeah right if um, you know if i if you want sessions which you want i can tell you in the end what all needs to be done definitely we'll have a conversation on that also okay it's okay chalo let's move on to the next one identify this intestinal pathology and i think i've been kind enough to actually mention also what is there so intestinal hai and they've shown you past positive macrophages that are present in the lamina propria much much expected yes that is going to be perfect that is going to be the whipple's disease perfect guys now the question that came in the previous inict is in front of you that patient will have steatorrhea and how will you identify this is what you will see can you see these pink pink cells in the lamina propria so they are past positive macrophages in the lamina propria but past what are they past positive diastase sensitive or resistant kya banaoge diastase sensitive or resistant everything on this planet is diastase resistant that is your rule everything is dr the only thing which is diastase sensitive is going to be glycogen ma'am till the time the examiner doesn't mention glycogen tab tak everything for me is going to be diastase resistant so this whipples is also going to be diastase resistant perfect what is the next thing next thing is too much of genetics overload you guys know that inict love ex, uh, exam loves genetics so i've got you a list of all the polyps you are going to tell me all the relevant genetics that is going to be there so quickly let me know for juvenile rectal polyp you know rectal ka case hoga rectal polyp juvenile there will be a less than 5 year old child everything about it is less than 5 age is also less than 5 and the genetics is also going to be numbers which are less than 5 like smat to smad 4 or bmpr 1a so you realized all the numbers also came out to be less than 5 age is also less than 5 juvenile rectal polyp settle ho gaya very good putes jeggers polyp which i don't even i didn't even feel like showing that image to you because i think i've shown it to you 1 million times of that christmas tree polyp that you see so i thought i'll just ask you the genetics this time exactly it is less or not less but around 11 years is the age and the genetics is also also going to be stk11 or lkb1 to sab kuch 11 11 chalega that is putes jeggers polyp perfect what are these two cowden syndrome and benayan ruvelkaba relay syndrome polyp both of them belong to the same one and that is going to be p10 no points for guessing that p10 gene is going to be present in what p10 gene is going to be present on chromosome number 10 ye dono hi hota hai cowden also benayan ruvelkaba relay syndrome also right? right now cronkite canada syndrome cronkite canada syndrome finally is the question that you would expect in inict because this is the only one where i will not teach you any genetics it is a non hereditary condition right so non hereditary means it's not going to go from mother to child and father to child that sort of a situation this is a sporadic thing that will happen very late in life so this is going to happen and the age that will be mentioned will be somewhere around a 50 55 year old person right the only this is a question they ask you which is the only non hereditary polypoidal condition that you have and that is cronkite canada syndrome settled guys okay chalo this is also done let's move on to the next set you are quickly going to tell me last exam only this question came so i had to had to ask you these are two needles which are used in bone marrow aspirate and bone marrow aspirate mein use hua matlab we have salhas and clemas which one is salhas which one is clemas i'm going to go by the side screw and the longitudinal screw so simple when we see salha for side screw and i can see a screw on the side that is the salhas needle so salhas has a side screw and this is of course a question that came 2 3 years ago but the question that came last time was the clema that is longitudinal screw wala you can see the screw is longitudinal so longitudinal is going to be the clema both of them are for bone marrow aspirate there is one more needle in which they don't ask you the uh, you know the image but they just ask you from point of view of 
uh, name and that is the Islam needle. So please note Salhas, Klimas and Islam needle. These are the bone marrow aspirate needles that you have. Everyone knows this. Very, very good. Now I'm going to take a super quick test of you of multiple leukemias. Let's give you scenarios, one, one line scenarios and let's see if you can answer them. Let me know. There is a child age in leukemias. Very, very important. Next, look at the blast count. There is a child with more than 20% blast. I don't have to read anything else after that. A child with more than 20% blast but past positivity is mentioned. That is ALL, correct? And which kind of past positivity are you seeing? You are seeing the dot blot or the block positivity. So, dot blot or block positivity is going to be noted. Next, there is an adult with more than 20% blast with or rods. Ma'am, this is kinder garden question it has to be aml but only on this much of information can you guess which aml should it have been common sense laga ke aml m0 m1 m2 m3 what do you think it's gonna be adult with more than 20 percent blasts with or rods A everyone saying aml Achha, aml m3 agle ka answer hai. Iska batao. this is most commonly gonna be aml m2 because my common sense tells me that the most common aml that we have in literature is aml m2 right okay let's move on to the third one of course this is the question that came in the last exam. Neat may be Ayatha, FMG also has it. Cells which are crisscross or rods and I've got you a picture for those. What are those cells known as? These are known as the famous faggot cells. The faggot cells where you can see these or rods are all becoming as a crisscross that is known as AML M3. Very good. What is the uh, clinical point of AML M3 that we are going to have? Other than faggot cell it shows you DIC. The only leukemia to show you DIC. So what are you going to tell me now? I'm going to stop over here you are going to tell me the genetics of AML, M2, M3 and M4 again genetics to expected hota hai. right so AML, M2, M3, M4 we will go by multiples mathematics M4 ka we will do 4 4s are 16 so we are going to come up to inversion 16 M3 ka again 15 is a multiple so translocation 15, 17 and M2 may 8 is a multiple translocation 8, 21 very very good tell me one thing 8, 21 is for AML M3 and you already know that instead of 8 I would have added an even number over here instead of 21 like say 8 and 22 8 with any even number will then become what it will become a case of Burkitt's lymphoma. So watch out in the exam. Don't lose a mark just on the basis of this silly mistake. 8 ke saath 21 likha that is AML M2. But 8 with any goddamn even number on this planet like 8 and 22, 8 and 14, 8 and 2. Any even number and you're going in for Burkitt's lymphoma. Settled. So AML M2, M3, M4 settled. The only one that is associated with DIC is going to be AML M3. You know the treatment from the medicine point of view. This is the only leukemia that is treated with a vitamin A problem, vitamin A metabolite, all trans retinoic acid along with arsenic trioxide. Settled? Yes. Someone mentioned ballerina skirt appearance in between, burkits and lots of things that you've correlated. So give me some time because micro is also a part of this session. So coming back, this is done. Now let's move on to the next one, which is the only leukemia never associated with radiation, never ever associated with radiation and your answer is CLL. So ma'am, radiation ke saath nahi Hoga, but then how will it occur? CLL may what is the most common one because this is the only one or only leukemia where I tell you a deletion and that is deletion 13Q. This is never ever going to be associated with radiation. Settled. The last one is SE for formality. I wanted to give you one question. You know as soon as you read massive splenomegaly and you read a low lab score, you know you are dealing with a case of CML and last image based session only if you remember we had studied CML along with its phases so I hope you guys are settled. Low lab score, one last question of this slide. Low lab score is number one seen in CML and is also seen in something else. Low lab score is seen in CML. It can also be seen in a case of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria that is PNH. Very good. So good guys you are settled on this as well now the last one that i have over here at least for this subject almost the last you know you have to quickly revise these you need to know the shelf life and the temperatures of these blood bank related things because again they love to ask you and they don't just ask you the shelf life they give you scenarios power cut ho gaya or you are an intern those kind of scenarios are gonna come quickly anything that has red blood cells in it 
R for red blood cell, R for refrigerator. Refrigerator, some books mention 2 to 6 degree, some mention 2 to 8 degree means the same. But how much time will it be? You also have to tell me the shelf life. How much time? Ma'am, that depends. Will you keep it for 21 days, 35 days or 42 days? How much time will you keep it? Or in other words, will you keep it for 3 weeks or you will keep it for 5 weeks or you will keep it for 6 weeks? That will depend on what anticoagulant have you used. If you have used... ACD or CPD basically ma'am jo 3 3 alphabet wala anticoagulants that you've used you will store blood for 3 3 uh, weeks someone asked me for PDF I'll give you the PDF when have I not given the PDF PDF mil jayega but I don't think you'll have time to open the PDF but yeah, if you want that like that mental satisfaction that I have the PDF in my folder and I'm going with the PDF I'm going in the exam it's somewhere lying in the storage with that mental satisfaction you want to go definitely you can take it up so A C D and C P D three three alphabets three weeks if I write C P D dash A if we have five characters five weeks and if we have cp sagam it is cp sagam that is six alphabets i can store the blood for six weeks so the temperature is the same but this is gonna be dependent on the anticoagulant that you have been used right next platelet this is a question that came in 2020 inict platelet rich plasma 22 24 degree centigrade with continuous agitation you have to continuously keep moving that particular machine constantly keeps moving and then that is going to have a shelf life for five days right for five days but the question that came was power failure ho gaya. this machine has started stopped uh, moving suddenly the platelets are stagnant so remember if no agitation then 24 hours exactly this means no agitation so the shelf life comes down to one day but if they are constantly moving shelf life is five days settled chalo now we come to the ffp fresh frozen plasma something frozen has to be there less than minus 18 degree this is what textbooks say but actually actually if you go into a blood bank it's somewhere around 20 minus 20 minus 30 tak rakhte. but okay somewhere less than minus 18 and anything that i freeze i will be able to store it for a very long time and that is going to be for one year however now aims will ask you that uh, freeze frozen state mein tha, but now you took it to your ward and in that uh, 20 minutes wo melt ho gaya. what is melting known as melting is known as thawing right so if they say that the fresh frozen plasma has been in molten state it is thawed ho chuka hai now how much time can you store it for again you can store it only for one day so you basically realize anything goes wrong whether the platelet machine stops working or the fresh frozen plasma ends up getting uh, thawed or gets into a molten state your final shelf life comes down to one day koi bhi problem hua to shelf life will come down to one day are we settled with this because of course these are expected questions can we move forward Something that I have to bore you for the one millionth time, I believe. But I believe because you are just so close to the exam. A glass time and that is the three stains so you know what we are moving forward towards i'm taking you a little forward towards microbiology and i promise in 45 seconds we are going to do three stains one last time because we've already done it a million times but yeah as i said 45 seconds three stains one last time of your life and then you will crack the inict what is gram staining they will always give you image-based questions they love these image-based questions one thing after the other you know it is come in and stain what is come in and stain so i've got it written so that we don't waste any time so come in and stain means that number one i'm adding crystal violet then i'm adding iodine which is a mordant then we are gonna add alcohol or acetone anything that removes the color so it could be alcohol acetone and finally it is a red color that is saffronin so crystal violet iodine alcohol acetone saffronin come in and stain is for gram staining obviously this is kindergarten question gram positive organism is going to be purple and gram negative organism is going to be red right the question that came in the previous year was iodine is the one that is used as a mordant previous year question so gram staining ke baad you know the process what is the next stain that i'm gonna ask you that class has asked mnemonic class has asked mnemonic matlab kiska hai it is the zn staining they will not write zeal nelson they will write acid fast staining same thing zeal nelson acid fast staining is the one that we have class has asked mnemonic and you can see the kind of the picture given to you there's a process that has been given to you and they will tell you either they will say fill in the blanks or they will give you identification so what is class has asked mnemonic 
quickly we've got number one i'm adding carbon fusion here the mordant is heat here i'm using mordant that is heat finally i use the class has asked i use the acid the famous acid that is h2so4 sulfuric acid and finally the background is blue why is it blue because i have used something called methylene blue class has asked mnemonic isme se has hata do remove the heat now what does it become if i remove this what is that modification class only asked mnemonic what does that become the cold zn stain very good cold zn stain previous year question of inict is the kinyon stain and another question that came is it is also known as the gabbard stain it means everything means the same thing whether they say cold or whether they say kinyon or whether they say gabbard it's all the same thing but in which scenario do we use it ma'am itna sara kkk you used cold zn stain kinyon stain so for which family do i use it in parasitology we use it for the coccidian parasites cryptosporidium and sporas right so for coccidian parasites you are going to use the kkk cold wala stain everyone's okay with this and you also know the previous year question let me ask you the previous year question they will not give you a picture fill in the blank saiga like our one liner session they asked you organism is dash in color background is dash in color you know that organism is coming photo nahi hoga you'll have to work on your visual memory organism is red in color and background as you can see is blue in color settled organism red background blue as it is a photo low and embedded into your memory okay the next one that i'm expecting what is this a stain for spores firstly can you all identify that there are definitely spores they have of lately become pretty pretty obsessed with these spore wala questions what is the stain for spores guys that you have uh, what is that going to be yes s for s that is how we had learnt it s for s means it is going to be the shaffer and the fulton stain very good shaffer and fulton stain so use kya hua so you have to learn what is spore i had given you one mnemonic and i had told you how your parents taunt you whenever you sleep for 14 16 hours ever when you don't have exams and you are sleeping after a few days your parents start saying na oh miss so and so is a king or a queen or princess and wakes up at 2 in the afternoon we've all had those phases of taunting from our parents so spores are also the resting form the dormant resting they also keep sleeping till 2 in the afternoon so we will refer to them as miss so and so or miss spore i called it miss spore why am i calling it miss spore because number one it uses malachite green and i can see that i can see that there is a green green spore that is forming and number two that it uses is saffron in red and i can see that also because the background is coming all red in color so miss spore the one who is sleeping the one who is sleeping right so remember malachite green and saffron in other two colors that you're going to have this is a less studied image but important for ini cet someone's okay someone started writing papa ke pari of course good i'm happy that you kept your humor intact so close to the exam it's so essential zn be used hota hai bilkul use hota hai of course spores can also number 1 the shaffer and fulton stain number 2 spores can also be positive for zn stain but what is the concentration of h2so4 that you will use in that case 0.25 to 0.5% h2so4 ka concentration will be used ओके कैन आई फील सो नाइस नाउ डॉक्टर हेमंत सिंह मैम मैलेशाइड ग्रीन तो कहीं और भी यूज होता है ओके यू आर रनिंग वन स्लाइड अ हेड ऑफ मी मैलेशाइड ग्रीन और कहाँ यूज होता है ऑफकोर्स दैट इज गोन बी दी एलबर्ट स्टेन फर्स्टली वी हैड स्टडीड दिस इन आर इमेज बेस्ड सेशन टेन डेज अगो सो दिस आल रैप अप इन ट्वेंटी सेकेंड एलबर्ट स्टेन इज ऑब्वियसली यूज फॉर वॉट इट इज यूज फॉर वॉल्यूट इन ग्रैन्यूल्स एंड वी हैव समथिंग नोन एज टिम ना सो वॉट इज टिम दैट इज द प्रोटोकॉल दैट आई टोल्ड यू नंबर वन यू एड टॉल्यूडीन ब्लू देन यू हैव आयोडीन and then you have malachite green so yes dr hemant you were right ke malachite green yahan bhi use hota and it's in front of you by chance you ever forget ma'am photo tha i forgot malachite green hai ya methylene blue hai to thoda sa common sense lagana ke malachite green hi hoga na because i can see some green color so by chance that confusion happens which does happen in the paper but don't let your common sense run away anywhere okay so toluidine blue iodine and malachite green that is going to be for albert staining and that is for volutin granules mean Means which bacteria are we talking about? We are talking about Corini bacterium diphtheria. Okay, very good. Uh, Acha, many of you have given me answers on the composition, on the other stains, things that we just discussed ten days ago. So that's why I'm not repeating. But I'm so happy that you guys remember it. Okay, look at this microscope, ma'am. It's looking like any other microscope in any other lab. But I have shown you the inside of that microscope. Now, do you want to comment on what this is? 
रेगुलर माइक्रोस्कोप लग रहा है कुछ डिफरेंट नहीं लग रहा बट सडनली आई सी दैट देर इज समथिंग एक्स्ट्रा दैट हैज बीन गिवन ओवर हियर येस देव गिवन यू अ लाइट सोर्स विद सो मेनी फिल्टर्स एंड अ डायक्रोएक मिरर एज सुन एज दे मैंशन डायक्रोएक मिरर दिस इज नॉट अ रेगुलर माइक्रोस्कोप दिस इज अ फ्लोरसेंट माइक्रोस्कोप बिकॉज इन दिस लाइट सोर्स ऑल्सो मस्ट हैव बीन एन अल्ट्रा वायलेट लाइट एंड एज सुन एज दे राइट फिल्टर्स एंड डायक्रोएक मिरर नेवर एवर गेट कन्फ्यूज सो जस्ट इमेजिन इफ यू कोरिलेट माइक्रो एंड पैथोलॉजी नाउ If I give you this kind of a picture and I say karyotyping karna hai, what karyotyping banding will you do? Will you do a G banding or a Q banding? Try to integrate this with patho. So you will say that simple hai, ma'am. Fluorescent microscope use kar rahe ho, so you will use the queen wala banding. You will do the queen a queen Q banding that we just now discussed ten minutes back. So see that is how they are going to integrate it. Someone asked me, ma'am, FITC kaha tha? What is FITC? If you are getting confused, just try to answer yourself. Question yourself. What is FITC? FITC is fluoroisothiocyanate. Fluoroisothio. साइनेट तो इसमें क्या लग रहा है फ्लोरो इट इज नथिंग बट अ ग्रीन कलर डाय नाउ इट्स अप टू यू वेर डू यू वॉन्ट टू यूज दैट ग्रीन कलर डाय इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज इट इन माइक्रोबायोलॉजी सैम्पल्स यू कैन यूज इट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज इट इन पैथोलॉजी वेर इन पैथोलॉजी विल यू यूज इट यू विल बी यूजिंग इट वेर फ्लो साइटोमीटर में यूज करेंगे सो बेसिकली एफ आई टी सी इज जस्ट अ ग्रीन कलर फ्लोरसेंट डाय यू कैन यूज इट इन दिस माइक्रोस्कोप ऑल्सो एंड इन पैथोलॉजी यू कैन यूज इट एज अ ग्रीन कलर इन द फ्लो साइटोमीट्री ऑल्सो ठीक है हो गया नाउ कमिंग बैक सम had asked me what is diacroic diacroic is very very simple dekho if you go into another previous year question of fluorescent microscope you know that the concept is that a shorter wavelength of light will not pass but i will convert it into a longer wavelength of light and that will pass so that is what a diacroic mirror is useful for that the shorter wavelength of light will not pass but when it is converted into a longer wavelength of light that is going to be passed and that is why i'm using a diacroic mirror over here theek okay? hai चलो मीन वाइल सम आई रियली लाइक हाउ यू गाइज कैन मल्टी टास्क टू दैट लेवल थोड़ा पढ़ाई भी है थोड़ा यू नो यू आर नाइसली फोकसिंग ऑन माई हैंड राइटिंग ऑल्सो कॉमेंटिंग ऑल्सो गिविंग आंसर ऑल्सो सो सुपर गुड अच्छा नाउ वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट माइक्रोस्कोप विच इज द माइक्रोस्कोप दैट लुक्स लाइक दिस स्पेस शिप गोइंग इन टू द स्पेस रेडी टू लॉन्च दिस रेडी टू लॉन्च वाला इज ऑफकोर्स गोना बी द इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप वाई इज इट रेडी टू लॉन्च वाई इज इट लुकिंग लाइक अ स्पेस शिप ऑल क्लोज फ्रॉम एवरीवेयर बिकॉज मैम इलेक्ट्रॉन्स यूज कर रहे हो सो यू विल हैव टू हैव Have to use vacuum. This is all closed. This is like a vacuum. It can't be all out there in the open. All the electrons will run off. So that is the medium that you use. And you know the question that they are going to ask you: What is the fixative for light microscope versus the fixative for electron microscope? Hundred million times this question has been asked. What is the light microscope? Ten percent neutral buffered formalin. And what is it for electron microscope? It is going to be two to two point five percent glutaraldehyde. So I realize that all these. can be used so easily in path as well as in micro so i realize formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde ma'am abhi patho mein use ho raha hai light microscope electron microscope you are using formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde suddenly you come to microbiology and you will start utilizing this in the chapter of sterilization disinfection don't we know glutaraldehyde known as the famous name of sidex ek aur use bata do glutaraldehyde known by the famous name of sidex what is going to be immersed in all the sidex yes of course all the scopes like bronchoscope laryngoscope and all those endoscopes are going to go into sidex so they have a patho use also and they have a micro use also you did just now you said all the scopes एंडोस्कोप लैरिंगोस्कोप ब्रोंकोस्कोप इसमें जाएगा पर कोई स्कोप है जो साइडेक्स में नहीं बट वेरी गुड आई गॉट एन आंसर मैम एक्सेप्ट आर्थ्रोस्कोप्स वाई वेर आर आर्थ्रोस्कोप्स गोइंग Come on, you know it. Where are arthroscopes going? That's the next question. The machine is right in front of you. What is this machine known as? So arthroscopes are going in a. They are going in a something known as a sterad. So sterad means. What is it? Okay, everyone saying ethylene oxide, guys. Ethylene oxide is more for uh, cardiopulmonary machines. Sterad is something for. plasma sterilization yes so please remember that plasma sterilization is what you will prefer for arthroscopes and that is what is going to ye machine ka jo naam hai that machine name if you read a little carefully and this will happen in ini also dhyan se padho there is a sterad written so it might be written it might not be removed also so remember this sterad is referred to as a plasma sterilization very good what are the questions on plasma sterilization that i want to ask you why is this also looking like 
लाइक अ डब्बा मशीन ऑल क्लोज लाइक इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप था ना क्लोज फ्रॉम एवरीवेयर बिकॉज यू हैव टू मेंटेन वैक्यूम हियर आल्सो यू हैव टू मेंटेन वैक्यूम दैट इज वाई इट्स क्लोज फ्रॉम एवरीवेयर ऑल्सो रिमेंबर यू हैव टू मेंटेन अ वेरी लो टेम्परेचर दीज आर ऑल बुलेट पॉइंट आस्ट बट हाउ डू आई क्रिएट प्लाज्मा प्लाज्मा वट इज प्लाज्मा फोर्थ स्टेट ऑफ मैटर नॉट सॉलिड नॉट लिक्विड नॉट गैस fourth state of matter how do i create it from a chemical called as h2o2 very very good so settled guys these are the three questions plasma sterilization uses h2o2 at a low temperature and it's looking like a closed dabba because there's going to be a vacuum created and that is the sterad machine that we have i think we are settled with this also we can move forward what do i see written over here lots and lots of motilities which is a must must know because again i and i exam loves they are in love with flagella flagella and motility in ka favorite question hai right so this is what either they will give you one liners if not one liners then match the following or multiple questions or there'll be a long clinical history but this motility will be your buzzword which will help you solve it to kahi na kahi to motility ja ke phasega that is there so let's do that tumbling very good everyone said that uh, ma'am tumbling is seen in listeria at what temperature tumbling at what temperature will it tumble at 22 25 degree centigrade or will it tumble at 37 degree centigrade i told you one uh, very famous or a very nice story also tumbling is basically like a drunk man tally like a drunk man falling left right so obviously at a young age it is okay to and a person will be able to get in control so at an old age nahi ho payega so much of drinking at old age not possible so at 20 25 degree tumbling is shown but at 37 degree tumbling will not be shown so listeria is that drunk man that you are talking about okay darting or shooting star everyone said vibrio tell me one more na one more other than vibrio compylobacter compylobacter and vibrio mein bahut common hai vibrio is also comma shaped compylobacter is also going to be comma shaped vibrio is also showing you darting shooting star compylobacter is also showing you vibrio also shows you diarrhea compylobacter also shows you diarrhea but of course the rice water stools diarrhea as soon as i mention you know, i'm talking about vibrio cholera right and if i say rice water stools you will say ma'am i will select vibrio if i say the organism is growing at 42 degree centigrade organism is growing at 42 degree centigrade then you're going to say ma'am compylobacter jejunae grows in june ka mahina what is june ka mahina 42 degree centigrade right so the one at 42 degrees is compylobacter very good excellent meanwhile someone also told me gbs yes compylobacter medicine question compylobacter jejunae gul and barry syndrome is also what is one of the association very very good okay coming to the next swarming in fact guys swarming ka hi photo is what i had given to you over here swarming is definitely seen over here but swarming most likely goes with proteus i told you in the last class only that it is seen in a lot of other organisms other than proteus also so jaldi se if you want to give me a quick recap maybe i can take a break and you can tell me ki ma'am swarming kahan kahan hota hai jaldi se let me know swarming is seen in pvcs what is pvcs we have P for of course we have studied proteus vibrio konsa wala ma'am vibrio come back to the p don't go for vibrio cholera it is vibrio parahemolyticus and alginolyticus vibrio parahemolyticus and alginolyticus c very good clostridium tetani clostridium tetani and one bacillus also c wala bacillus and that is going to be bacillus cereus and finally s is what s is going to be cerecia so remember proteus vibrio parahemolyticus clostridium tetani and bacillus cereus and cerecia one last jaldi se batao cerecia ka pigment very famous pigment of cerecia cerecia is going to have a red color pigment what is the name of that red color pigment cerecia cerecia rrr cerecia has a red color pigment known as prodogeosin just again one of the gut feeling kind of questions that is there someone just asked me ma'am alginolyticus ka kuch aur bhi tha batao this is i should be asking you that alginolyticus ka aur kya tha i'll give you one i'll remind you of the story that i told you then maybe you'll tell me alginolyticus i told you is reminding me of ajinomoto that is used in chinese food which is very very salty ajinomoto use hota hai chinese food mein very very salty kuch yaad aaya what is it with alginolyticus yes you will say that ma'am with alginolyticus you told us this was the most tolerant to salt this was the one so we'll I'll just write it i think it's not visible to all of you this is the one that is going to be most tolerant to salt 
even up to 10% salt it can tolerate and itna zyada chinese food na chinese food has ajinomoto that is how it sounds like previous year question very important and itna zyada salt and chinese food and spicy food if you will eat what is going to happen to you from your eyes and from your ears they say na itna zyada spices you ate that aankhon se aur kaanon se dhuaan nikal gaya so basically it's going to result in ear infection and eye infection so eye and ear infections are going to be seen with alginolyticus is that okay so it is most tolerant to salt and eyes and ears are the infections that it causes dragon ban gaye very good yeah dragon ban gaye perfect so swarming is done all miscellaneous questions also done coming back quickly where do you see the falling leaf motility ma'am girta hua leaf girta hua leaf is giardia lamblia we all know it girta hua leaf perfect where do you see twitching motility t for t to everyone will tell me twitching motility is seen in trichomonas but tell me one more other than trichomonas twitching motility is also seen in Eichenella. Coming to the cork screw, ma'am, the one that is looking like a screw, tight, tight like a screw. What is tight, tight like a screw? Treponema pallidum. Treponema pallidum looks like a tight screw. The shape is only like a tight screw. So cork screw motility and lashing motility. Borrelia. Borrelia is going to have a lashing motility. Again, settled. We are done with all the motilities that you had to know. Okay, everyone, can I? Uh, move forward with it because now I'm gonna ask you the most question which has obviously again aya to hat trick pura hoga. What is this? You can see a classical three images and I'll give you there will be a history of some trauma to a rose thorn prick. History of trauma. Dekho, fungus mein do trauma wale questions aayenge. Abhi se dekh lo. This is one trauma wala question and this is gonna be another trauma wala question. Just two of these and you don't have to mess up in both of them. So what is this? This trauma trauma question as soon as i say some trauma has happened to the rose gardeners or the rose related so rose gardener disease and you know i'm talking about sporothrix but what is the question that they gave you ke jahan pe prick hua there was a lesion at the pulp of the finger or the back of the hand there was a lesion but how is it spreading it is spreading along the lymphatics this question will be given a lot it's going to show you a lymphocutaneous spread and that is what came in the previous years what else with rose will you learn rose Ma'am, look at the conidia. They are looking like rose, so it's showing you rosettes of conidia. And what is this body? Center me kya hai? Center me that round thing. That is a cigar body. And what are these projections around it? That is making it a star. That is asteroid body. So cigar body, asteroid body, rosettes of conidia, lymphocutaneous spread. Now put everything under one question, and your question is ready. There's a female or a, a gardener who is roaming around in the rose fields and has developed a nod. Module which is spreading along the lymphatics. Microscopy shows you any of these things mentioned: cigar, asteroid, or rosettes of conidia. Your answer is sporothrix. Shenka, all of you were right that ये जो मैम pink pink asteroid बन रहा है. This is the famous splendor hopley phenomenon. Amazing. Splendor Hopley phenomenon, which I don't know how many of you are getting confidence. I am getting a lot of confidence listening to your answers. That it's not micro, me. Jab so much of you know recall start coming up. It's a very very uh, good sign. So you might feel that you've forgotten everything, which is very obvious to happen because you have 19 subjects and a lot more to deal with. But when you start answering, I don't know. You should be getting that confidence. If you're not, then let me remind you that you should be feeling confident. Similarly, another trauma wala question comes. There is a forest. worker and how will they say the trauma in the forest worker the forest worker is walking barefoot barefoot chal raha and he lands up with this kind of a cauliflower like lesion on the foot and you know we are dealing with chromoblastomycosis perfectly put up and chromoblastomycosis means you have the famous you are sick of this question i am sick of this question everyone knows the copper penny bodies which are also referred to as Right, first known as the medullary bodies or the muriform bodies or the sclerotic bodies. But exam, you know what happens? You are so. Happy that my trauma wala question has come. Examiner just messes up all these bodies. Remember, cigar and asteroid. Cigar and asteroid were seen in Sporothrix shenkai. That is the rose gardener's disease. Whereas these medullar, muriform, or copper penny bodies, they are gonna be chromoblastomycosis. That is the organism itself, Dr. Chandni. That is the copper penny bodies that you are asking me. It is a part of the organism itself. That is what it is. Okay. So do not mess up. So now finally these are done. I'm taking you to a whole set of 
things in front of you. You have three pictures, you have a lot of one-liners, you know which organism I'm talking about. As soon as I say cryptococcus, you know I'm dealing with HIV positive patient or meningitis ka ma'am history hoga. HIV positive patient with meningitis, I will think of cryptococcal meningitis. Cryptococcal meningitis ka case hai, two scenarios possible. Either my patient is coming living to me or my patient is coming dead to me. If the patient is coming living to me, I will take a C SF sample and what is the stain that I will do exactly I will do India ink or basically nigrosin so what family of stain is this this is going to be a negative stain that I'm going to do if my patient comes dead to me autopsy biopsy I so on biopsy how will I identify cryptococcus I will identify it as the muci carmin done so just that I have to read that one word in the paper options may ye sab kuch hoga where are they wanting me to do that stain? On a CSF sample, I do negative staining. On a biopsy, I'm going to do this red-red color ka muci carmin stain. Finally, what is the culture media? I can see something going brown. So I'm going to call it a bird seed niger agar. So bird seed niger. Niger will anyway tell me that something is going brownish. So bird seed niger agar. But none of these are confirmatory. Can you tell me what is the most confirmatory test that we have for cryptococcus? Latex agglutination test again a previous year question very famous latex agglutination test in fact after covid also if i have to tell you abhi sun lo because still i believe covid is a little fresh in their mind so latex agglutination tests related if i feel what are the two expected questions either they ask you cryptococcus because that is what they'll ask you from microbio and if they ask you regarding uh, uh, pathology D dimer testing is also done by latex agglutination test why am I linking this with COVID because you all remember that COVID in the end in the last wave we got to know it causes clotting it's causing coagulopathy so D dimers is definitely something that is used in the testing so if you had to get a question on latex agglutination in current day scenario either for cryptococcus or D dimer is what I would expect and yeah that is settled for all of you you know what are we going in towards the end you had asked me for this and and I thought that we will quickly do this. You asked me to revise for you all the eggs and uh, most of the life cycles. So, jaldi se, should we keep a target of say 15 minutes? And it's not, I'm not teaching you entire chapters. You've done that with me earlier. It's going to be a rapid scan through one last time before the exam. All the undas you have to see once, all the life cycles, let's flip through once and wrap up the session yes up for it you might be a little tired but honestly this is the last thing and it's gonna be worth it so let's get going with it right away okay chalo let's start first why only undas why only cystode trematode nematode let's look at all the life cycles now so let us start right away from here can you identify this particular life cycle in front of you and see life cycle me pehle host Rule number one, pick up the host. Rule number two, see what is going in the body and what is going out of the body. So, kaha kaha focus karoge? Ma'am, I'll focus on the host. I will see what is going in the body. I will see what is coming out of the body. That is how I will be able to identify. This is a very classical. See, you're not seeing. Someone said, uh, yeah, someone said I'm waiting for enterobius vermiculares. Okay. But anyway, chalo, what is this? Only human beings, point number one. And I could see one, two, three, four, a quadrine nucleated cyst that was coming up quadrinucleated cyst that is coming up and I can see that okay how the cyst was going from one nucleus to two nucleus to four nuclei ma'am this is a classical case of entamoeba histolytica very very famous one also one more hint sometimes when you'll say ma'am I could not understand the image only very blurred picture can you see the arrows where all is it going examiner is trying to tell you okay intestine involvement to hai then the examiner has also pointed towards the liver there are very few things that will involve the liver and we know that in the intestine this causes a flask shaped ulcer but in the liver it causes the anchor we saw appearance right? so number one either the host and the inside outside thing will help me look at the host look at inside outside scenario or look at what all organ pointings have been done that will also give you a quick quick hint right then of course all miscellaneous organs like the brain is affected and all of those so this is not a session where I'm going to tell you one one detail about it nahi. I am telling you catch points how to pick up the life cycle in the exam that is the agenda so ye wala ho gaya. coming to the next one 
again look at the host and look what is going in and out going in only one thing i can see there is something referred to swimming and something going via swimming as soon as they say swimming and some organism coming into the body you know you are dealing with a case of nigleria fowleri very very good so ma'am i can very well see this is nigleria fowleri what disease are you talking about dekho swimming se hua it's going via the swimming what form is going it's the trophozoid form that is going via the swimming and i can see it is going to cause very good primary amoebic meningoencephalitis primary amoebic meningoencephalitis repeating once again which form is going trophozoite because in most of the life cycles it is the cyst which goes in the body the cyst is infective but in nigleria fowleri the infective stage is the trophozoid give me one more organism where trophozoite is infective stage because in that organism cyst hota hi nahi hai cyst does not exist what is that organism where only trophozoid diagnosis is also trophozoid infection is also with trophozoid ma'am the other organism where this trophozoid story is going to come trichomonas vaginalis so remember trophozoid is infective in number 1 trichomonas vaginalis and number 2 it is infective in nigleria fowleri this might help you in identifying the life cycle in the paper this is number 1 number 2 what is this a life cycle of now look what is happening i can see every arrow is going everywhere cyst is also coming to the human beings trophozoite is also coming to the human beings and look at the methods it's coming via food also it is coming via inhalation also it is coming via contact with eyes also har jagah se aa raha hai and everything is coming basically ma'am all arrows are going everywhere yeah what is that going to be this is a case of एक एंथमीबा स्टिल इफ यू कुड नॉट आइडेंटिफाई मैम नहीं समझ आया सो मेनी लाइफ साइकिल्स कुड यू स्टिल सी दिस इज द ओनली वन वे स्पाइक्स आर कमिंग आउट दिस इज द ओनली ट्रोफोजॉइड वे यू सी स्पाइक्स बिकॉज ए कैंथो वर्ड मीन्स स्पाइक यस दैट इज हाउ यू कुड हैव आइडेंटिफाइड इट वॉट डिजीज डज इट कॉज ग्रैन्यूलोमेटिस अमीबिक मेनिंगो एनसेफेलाइटिस सो इन दीज फ्री लिविंग अमीबा ये जो दोनों पड़े इधर यू विल गेट सम स्विमिंग वाला हिस्ट्री विथ ट्रोफोजॉइड कमिंग दैट इज नाइगलेरिया फाउलरी और यू विल गेट एवरीथिंग coming by every root everything is coming by every root it is coming and spikiness is seen that is acanthamoeba and very good why what is the eyes ka association here in ophthalmology contact lens users may it causes ulcers right so you are right on that dr mahima perfect okay now let's move on to the next now the next set of three things are very easy to identify why do i say that because all that you have to read is the vector involved bas ab you will say ma'am finally you said host padho to host i can see there is something happening in human beings and there is some insect also that they have mentioned and i could read that the insect over here is the triatomine bug the triatomine reduvid bug means i am dealing with a case of trypanosoma cruzi and that is the shagas disease do you guys remember i told you an amazing amazing story about shagas disease when we were going in for the image based questions remember the cruise life the jhakas life everyone i hope you do yes so before that before i get into it you will say ma'am what if this bug's name was not mentioned sir of insect some insect i would never know it is a triatomine reduvid bug and human being was made then how would i identify it is trypanosoma cruzi or trypanosoma brucei for that you guys will have to tell me something see there are two three things that you have to pick up over here so what is the two three things we have something called trypanosoma cruzi just a second i think there is an issue with the formatting yeah just give me a second yeah we are settled okay so tell me something when i'm talking about trypanosoma cruzi or i'm talking about trypanosoma brucei or i'm talking about leishmania these are the three things that we have right so now how will i know कौन कौन सा वेक्टर वेक्टर तो मैम इज वेरी वेरी इजी टू आइडेंटिफाई राइट बट what if the vector is erased from the life cycle then what are you going to anyone ma'am there is a mnemonic which says bet you can't keep the cat on your lap what is this bet you can't keep the cat on the lap means what means that when i'm talking about trypanosoma cruzi what are the three forms that i'm going to see in the life cycle amastigot tripomastigot and 
epimastigot. Okay, so let me go back to the life cycle. If you see over here, what are the forms? Can you start labeling for me? Can you see there is a tripomastigot? Yes, ma'am, there is an amastigot. Yes, can you see there is an epimastigot also mentioned? Ma'am, con con se forms likhe te? So for trypanosoma cruzi, you see these three forms. You see amastigot, tripomastigot, epimastigot. I know for a fact that this is a case of trypanosoma cruzi. So what are the two ways of identifying? Ya to you identify the vector which you know is the triatomine bug or you identify the forms. So let me do this one more exercise with you. Tell me for trypanosoma brucei. Ma'am, either I will look at the vector. Trypanosoma brucei is what? Trypanosoma brucei is something known as the sleeping sickness. So vector is also going to be what? It is going to be the CC fly. Vector is CC fly and bet. What are the two forms? Trypanosoma brucei mein kya kya dikhega? We are going to see epimastigot, tripomastigot. Let us pick up the life cycle from here and identify. What do you see? Okay ma'am, I can very well see. I think there's a mild over overlap happening just ignore those uh, formatting issues just focus that ma'am firstly I can see ha you told me CC fly out how CC fly matlab sleeping sickness sleeping sickness matlab this is a case of trypanosoma brucei by chance they have erased it so you told me that you have to keep a bet what is the bet brucei mein you will see two forms epimastigot tripomastigot bilkul I can see tripomastigots mentioned over here all way tripomastigot and I can see epimastigots which are mentioned in the insect bus or Koi mention nahi hai ma'am, there is no amastigot, there is no promastigot. So this is definitely a case of trypanosoma brucei. Everyone's identified, analyzed how to identify these things. Finally coming to leishmania. Leishmania ke liye, although I have given you a mnemonic lap, but I don't think you need any mnemonic for leishmania because you know leishmania ke liye, your mnemonic is very classical. Sandfly, look at this life cycle. I hope it is visible. Life cycles are usually difficult to fit in one slide. But yeah, as soon as you see that something related to a sand fly is written in the paper. But sand fly matlab number one thing coming to my mind is leishmania. But you said ma'am lap wala mnemonic yaad kara do. Lap wala mnemonic kya hai? That is gonna be amastigot and promastigot. And that is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing promastigots and I'm seeing amastigots. I'm not seeing any tripomastigot, any apimastigot, nothing. So finally, what is your take home message? Message, we can write it one last time and wrap it up. Bet you cannot keep the cat on your lap. If you identify this, all three life cycles are done. Quick revision. Trypanosoma brucei, Trypanosoma cruzi and leishmania. And do you know what forms are you going to find in their life cycle? The epimastigot and tripomastigot for brucei, amastigot, tripomastigot, epimastigot for cruzi and amastigot and promastigot for leishmania. Is that okay? For everyone, bet you can't keep the cat on the lap, right? That cat sat on a mat, Dr. Mahima, that is our jinxed question. Both of end mein karenge hi karenge because when we did that for neat PG, it came in neat PG. I'm going to do it today also because I consider that as my jinx. Ke wo karoge session mein, toh hi session mein se questions aayenge. So I'm going to do that right at the end of the class. Anyway, this is done. Moving on to the next. What do you think is going to be this? What is this guys? You can see one cat. Now as soon as I see a cat and then some association with human beings. So there's a definitive host called cat and an association with human beings. I know I'm dealing with the life cycle of Toxoplasma gondii. Now they are going to ask you what? How is from the cat Toxoplasma coming to the humans? So kya kya roots hai? Via what roots can it come? It can come via any root possible. Yeah, someone just tell me ma'am is this the poop potty question? Yeah, this is the poop question that you have and what is the poop question so basically there are gonna be oocysts there are sporulated oocysts which are going to be present in the cat feces sporulated oocyst in the cat feces that is what is gonna come to the human beings yeah this is definitely the poop wala question right so you have to talk about cat feces now you know how the question came in INICT was that Fresh feces of cat is infective or old feces of cat is infective. So ironical that we have to study the poop life cycle of a cat. But we will have to. But now, fresh feces or old feces. So remember the old feces of cat is infective. Why? Because initially when the cat passed the oocysts, they were just oocysts. They had not sporulated. 
fresh feces will not have sporulated oocyst they will take some time to undergo sporulation that is why the old cat feces is infective to us when the sporulation has occurred like i said very sad scenario that we have to learn the poop cycle of cat but that is how it is so they say is fresh cat feces infective in a case of toxoplasma gondii and you will say no theek hai chalo having said that what else is it only oocysts no even bradyzoites can be infective to humans and even tachyzoites can be infective to humans so ultimately i realize that toxoplasma is damn toxic damn toxic matlab every form is infective to humans sporulated oocysts tachyzoid bradyzoite everything can come to us theek hai everyone settled with this let's move on to the next life cycle this is a tough one to identify let's see if you can i see some organism and i can see some intestine ka specimen being drawn over here everything goes into intestine something is causing diarrhea what do you think is this going to be but i'll give you a hint this is probably a case of hiv positive individual and i say hiv positive with intestine ka history ma'am all those coccidian parasites come everyone said what cryptosporidium how are you so confident why did because you're right which is good but how did you identify because even cyclospora is going to go like this even isospora is going to go like this but ma'am we know that the previous year aims exam has asked us that cryptosporidium hide karta hai it only goes here has it gone inside the cells no it did not go inside the cells cryptosporidium will always be present along the brush border and that is going to be that is going to be the hint over here only staying hiding around the brush border what is the previous year aims question what is this hiding tunnel known as what is this hiding tunnel known as this is known as a parasitiferous vacuole previous year question said which organism hides inside a tunnel called a parasitiferous vacuole crypto crypto word only tells me it's going to hide cryptic cryptocurrency it's going to hide somewhere so where is it hiding it is hiding in the brush border in a vacuole over here and that's about it that is the only hint in this question that you have and one more mnemonic with cryptocurrency i told you that is why for cryptocurrency i told you na that is ka jo um Yes, I've got the answer. Yes, what is the drug of choice? Nitazoxanide. So now you know everything about cryptocurrency. What is this crypto? Cryptosporidium. Where is cryptocurrency hiding? It is hiding in a parasitiferous vacuum. And who has cryptocurrency? Nita Ambani. Nitazoxanide. That is the drug of choice. Settled. Let's move on. We are almost now. We are done with all those amoebas and coccidians. We are going into that. trematode nematode story right before i go into cystode trematode nematode you have to tell me three slides and you have to tell me all the eggs we are going to make a timeline of the 3 minutes 3 minutes 3 slides all three families ka eggs khatam kar do because if you know how to identify the egg life cycle is going to be a cake walk so quickly let me know what is this of course ma'am as soon as you show me an egg which has 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 hooklets six wala egg is cystodes very good we just did this in the image based session the six wala eggs is going to be a cystode and that is also going to have two projections like a projection over here and a projection over here these are referred to as polar filaments and knobs and it has some dirty dirty granules which are yolk granules this is the egg of all the cystodes except so six wala eggs is for cystodes except h diminuta What is H diminuta gonna show you? H diminuta is not gonna show you these yolk granules. It is not gonna show you the polar filaments. They co. You're not seeing any polar filaments over here. You're not seeing any dirty, dirty granules over here. So when these are not seen, that is H diminuta. Very good. Sab ko pata hai. But what is this family? The egg which has a lid on top of it. Lid. Asa ek protection hai. Lid hai. That is referred to as the operculated eggs. Where do we see the operculated eggs? Operculated eggs are seen in S. STD very good lid is for protection and uh, STD ke against also everyone needs protection so what is this protection wala egg we have spirometra we have trematodes and we have diphyllobothrium latum so now all your cystodes are done ma'am all the cystodes are going to look like this except 
two three cystodes one is this h diminuta which doesn't show you these yolk granules and polar knobs one is this spirometra and diphyllobothrium latum because they are going to show you the operculated eggs versus next family what do the trematodes show you i just told you trematode is going to show you the operculated egg the lid wala egg all the trematodes but which is that remember that sssss story which is the trematode which will say i will not show you the operculated egg i will show you spinous eggs and those are gonna be these three schistosoma very good schistosoma mansoni schistosoma hematobium japonicum one last time in your life how did you identify these schistosoma hematobium i can see a terminal spine terminal spine t is only seen in hematobium right where do you see lateral spine lateral spine is going to be seen in leta hua sota hua man leta hua sota hua man so that is mansoni and finally where is or which of them is going to be a rudimentary spine not showing you any spine and that is going to be schistosoma japonicum right so please note these schistosomas will show you spines because life cycle may you will see spinous eggs and tick mark schistosoma right away so the trematodes are also done the last family that you have for the eggs are going to be the nematodes then i take you to their life cycles what are these eggs guys firstly ma'am jo aisa round round lagega wo of course round worm hoga this is common sense so the round round wala eggs are going to be the Round worm. Round worm basically means I'm talking about Ascaris lumbricoids, the fertilized and the non-fertilized. Round round wala eggs, round worm. The eggs which are gonna show OO indentations, they are indented blastomeres, ma'am. Those are going to be the hook worm. The hook worm is gonna show those OO wala indentations. Yes, this is also settled. The egg which is gonna look like a dholak, that is how students call it. Dholak is what you call it, and this is the examiner's favorite egg. This dholak wala egg, which examiner calls as barrel shaped eggs. So where do you see barrel shaped eggs? Barrel shaped eggs are seen in TT, that is Tricuris Tricura, exactly. And finally, where do you see this? D shape egg. What did I say? Where do you see D? The way you say D. So D ke aage E E E. This D shape egg is seen in Enterobius vermicularis. We had one Enterobius vermicularis fan over here. Someone said I love the life cycle and eggs of Enterobius vermicularis. I don't know why do you love Enterobius in life. Don't get down to that. But yeah. This is the cycle and this is the egg of Enterobius vermicularis which is going to be D shape egg. So D matlab it is going to be what? It is plano convex one side is plain one side is convex so plano convex egg and if you see inside it you will see one line that line is the classical classical wala tadpole larva so remember it's going to show you a d with tadpole larva theek hai eggs ho gaya ab inko life cycles mein fit in kare should we start putting them into life cycle you know the rule of life cycle right what is the rule of life cycle? Pick up the host. What is coming in the body? What is going out of the body? That is important. So host to thalo. Ma'am, iske andar host, number one, I can see humans. Other than that, I can see one chota wala, tiny some swimming creature. And I can see one fish over here. So what is this? There is a human with a chota fish and a bada fish. Excellent. You've got the answer. It is diphyllobothrium latum. How did I tell you to identify diphyllobothrium latum? Diphyshobothrium latum is how I told you to learn it. Do fish hoga. Just life cycle mein do fish hai. Chota fish. What is chota fish known as? Cyclops. And bada fish is known as fish of course. And we are there. So human, chota fish, bada fish, diphyshobothrium latum. And what is the infective form? When you ate this fish, what exactly did you eat inside this fish? It is the pleurocercoid L3 larva. That is again a previous year question of the exams. The Pleurocercoid L3 larva is gonna be eaten. Yeah, Clonorchis also has a fish that I'll come to in a while. But yeah, chota fish, bada fish. I hope diphyllobothrum latum. And everyone on the way told me the anemia, which is very good. B12 deficiency, vitamin B12, megaloblastic anemia, very very good. Chalo, let's move on to the next one. What is this? There are two life cycles put up into one. Firstly, you say that, ma'am, as soon as I see a pig and as soon as I see a cattle, I know that ये तो कुछ tinea related हो रहा है. But ma'am, it didn't strike me only in the exam. Cattle and pig, pig तो is also present. in trichinella so many of them have pigs so then i picked up the egg 
I saw that the egg was one, two, three, four, five, six. Six wala egg tha. This is a cystode member. See, the egg is really going to help you in the identification. That is a cystode member that you have. That is going to have six hooklets wala egg. And of course, now I know that, yeah, these are to do with tinea. And how do I identify which of them is tinea saginata? Tinea saginata is going to use cattle and tinea solium is going to use the pig. So now you know if host does not help you, the egg will definitely help you. That is why I showed you the eggs in the beginning. Let's move on to the next one. I mean, favorite. Is the human being is chugged on to one side. As soon as I see that the human being is chugged on to one side, means the human being is an accidental host. If he's an accidental host, I can see the definitive host mentioned over here is a dog, and the intermediate host mentioned over here is a sheep. This is definitely dog tapeworm. Dog tapeworm means this is associated with echinococcus, and we know that accidental host, dead end host is human beings. Is that okay? Ye to easiest to identify ho gaya na? So this means they are going to give me a case of hydrated cyst. Very, very simple. Coming on to the next one, the next life cycle. There are two life cycles inside it. Look at just this much of life cycle. Ma'am, there is something happening. Human, human, human. Just human, human, human. Everything happens in human. But when I saw the egg, I saw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I saw that 6 wala egg, cystode member. The only cystode which will roam around only in humans. Only one host. Very good. And that only one host is going to be H. Nana. Perfect. But now I put a twist in the story. With the human, I add a rodent inside it. Now, what is the human and rodent going to be? That is going to be the rat tapeworm and rat tapeworm basically or you can say yes, which one? H. Diminuta. Very good. So, ye thoda sa dekh lena exam mein. If only human, human, human is there, that is H. Nana. I've always told you H. Nana, one host. But with H. Uh, with human, if there is a rat mentioned, then go for rat tapeworm, that is H. Diminuta. Simple, settled. Should we move on to the next one? The next life cycle. Maybe the family has changed. Maybe you just want to look at the eggs and tell me what is happening over here you don't want to look at anything else after that this is so so easy to identify as soon as i see eggs which are having these spines of course i know i'm dealing with spinous eggs spinous eggs means schistosoma yes very good and everything in schistosoma firstly what are the host fam you said rule number one pick up the host the host mein mujhe ya human being dikh hai. and i can see a nice beautiful snail drawn schistosoma has only human being and snail nothing else and everything of schistosoma is with s s for snail s for cercaria larva remember in the exam cercaria larva looks like a folk the folk wala larva is cercaria larva how does it come previous year question it comes through the skin they have written in case you forget, they have written, they are not making the person eat it. This is coming through the skin. And what are the eggs showing you? The eggs are showing you spines. So please remember, cercaria, skin, spine, sab kuch S, S, S chalega, that is schistosoma. Coming to the next one. What do you think is this? Rule number one, pick up the host. I can see there is a human being. I can see there is a snail. And I can see something over here as well. Some They've written some crustacean, crab, crayfish. What do you think is it? If you have a human and you have a snail, at least your trematode family is done. Now you have to have something called crayfish or crab, some kind of crustacean. Station mentioned, ma'am. This is gonna be caragonimus. Yes, crab ya crayfish matlab. It is gonna be para cara paragonimus vestimini. By chance, nahi samajaya, ma'am. Mujhe photo hi nahi samajaya. I did not understand your fish hai, crab hai, cray hai, kya hai. I did not understand. So then I realized that at least human being hai, snail hai. Family is trematodes, that is certain. Then I realized that over here they've given involvement of lungs, which is the only fluke which is going to have pulmonary involvement. Paragonimus is a pulmonary fluke. So the only where one where lungs will be mentioned, that is a big hint. That is why eggs are coming in the sputum also. Big, big hint in the paper, just in case, because many people come back to me saying, ma'am, Samajini aya, this is a crayfish or a crab or what on this planet. So then don't lose hope. Host is not, host is just a first way of identifying identifying host nahi identify hua pick up the eggs eggs nahi hua so then you pick up the organs that are there that will definitely make you reach the life cycle right 
ओके कमिंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन कैन यू आइडेंटिफाई दिस पिक अप द होस्ट क्या होस्ट है दिस इज अ नाइस पिक्चर आई कैन सी अ ह्यूमन बींग देन आई कैन सी वन स्नेल ओवर हेयर एंड आई कैन ऑल्सो सी वन फिश ओवर हेयर सो ह्यूमन बींग एंड स्नेल मतलब आई एम डीलिंग विद ट्रीमटोड्स एंड देन यस वॉट इज दिस फिश वाला ट्रीमटोड फिश वाला ट्रीमटोड क्लोन और फिश फिश वाला ट्रीमटोड क्लोन और फिश और ऑपिस्थॉर फिश or in other words clonorchis that is how the examiner will write it right examiner will write it as clonorchis so now fish se related two things don't get confused if it is a human being snail and fish that is clonor fish or clonorchis but if it would have been human being fish and fish that is the first thing that i showed you if it would have been human being with a fish and another fish that is human fish fish that would have become die fishobotrium latum is that okay right that is another thing that is done chalo let's move forward what do you think is this now these are nematodes which are my favorite cycles why because ma'am in sab mein host to ek hi rahega the host shall always remain human being there is no rat or etc etc things coming up human human rahega so the way of picking it up is very simple look at the eggs if you either you will look at the eggs or you will look at the adult worms and you will easily identify to so, dekho what is the eggs ye round round wala eggs ma'am you had told us the round round wala eggs are the round worm i can see the round round wala eggs that have come up so that is going to be a case of round worm for all of you yes also i've got you the adult worm side by side why because the adult worms are also being asked i've shown you this in the image based session but i'm quickly revising it round worm mein to round round hi dikhega ma'am how do you know which is male and female what's the trick over here ma'am the male will always be coiled posteriorly the male of every nematode is going to have some problem posteriorly so always remember the male worm is going to be coiled posteriorly right so that is and i will show you many worms right now everywhere you will realize male piche se aisa gol gol round round coiling hoga right simple so round round are the eggs round round is the body of the organism i can see the round round eggs and thus it is a case of round worm let me move on to the next one how do i identify this i think even if you just look at this much ye kya hai what is this egg ma'am the dholak wala egg i know the dholak wala egg is what this is a classical case of trichur is trichura and we know trichuris trichura is known as what trichuris trichura is known as whip worm whip means whip is a hunter i can see that i can see that it's definitely looking like a hunter out here which is male which is female ma'am jo posteriorly gol gol hoga wo male hai jo posteriorly aise gol gol hoga that is going to be a male simple settled so hunter jaisa whip worm and the dholak wala barrel shaped eggs trichuris trichura is also done let's move on to the next one who told me that ma'am my favorite one is this yes you are here finally your favorite life cycle is here and that is going to be the d shaped eggs you can see the d shaped eggs and that is enterobius there is one very interesting thing that you see in enterobius vermicularis and what is that interesting thing you will realize that the male and the female have been shown over here the male and the female have been shown over here but the eggs are being laid over here and what is that that's a very interesting story what is it mating is happening over here that is in somewhere in the cecum ileocecal region male and female are mating over here but the male of this enterobius vermicularis has only come on this planet for mating once his purpose of mating is done he is going to die off so this male is going to die after mating what a purpose in life right so his purpose in life was mating mating hua and this male is going to die off now this poor female who is pregnant is sitting over here all alone because the male has died so this female is very depressed she does not want to give birth to her kids at the same place where mating occurred so she decided that i am going to go night time i'm going to hide and i'm going to go all the way i will travel to the perianal region and i will give birth to my kids over here in the perianal region that is the perianal pruritus that the patient has so ultimately she says that the place that my husband has died i am not going to give birth over there i'm going to go somewhere else and i'm going to give birth to my kids that is the story of enterobius vermicularis someone who was saying i love enterobius vermicularis this is probably the reason that you love this cycle that she is not giving birth to the kids at the same place where the male or her husband had died she wants to go to the perianal region give birth over there and that is where you will pick 
make up all these eggs and what are the eggs the eggs are the d shape eggs that you guys were yeah so two minute silence for husband rip yes but i'm sure after this you will never ever forget this cycle Achha, bin dono mein se, which is male which is female ma'am the story remains the same the male is gonna be coiled posteriorly so this of course happens to be the male right everyone's a life cycle and this life cycle has a story i know it's very close to the exam but i'll take 30 seconds for this this is a story which is a self-made story that me and my friend 30 minutes before the microbio prof exam i remember we were so jumbled up with these life cycles Cycles. we had no idea how we were going to write life cycles in the exam so this was a story we made like half an hour before our university exam and after that we didn't study any other life cycle because we kept laughing so much after studying this and this is how we had learned that enterobius is that organism where the female doesn't give birth because she says that my husband died here and i will go somewhere else and give birth and then after that we did not study anything because for the next 30 minutes we were in splits and Luckily, this was the life cycle that came in my prof exam, else I would have failed that exam. But this came and yes, that is since then, since 2009, this story has been with me and I always share it with every batch. So this is the story of Enterobius. Now, if you realized, I don't know whether you realized it or not, abhi jo jo dekha, round worm mein, what was happening? Eggs were being eaten, okay, whatever larva was being eaten. Next, Tricurus, eaten. Enterobius, eaten everything eaten eaten chal rahe ma'am skin wala kaun sa hai now finally we come down to this we come down to what is this guys you've seen the egg you've anyway identified it ma'am egg dekh liya identify to ho chuka hai this is the hookworm that you have how do i identify because finally it is gonna be a skin penetration that is gonna be there and skin penetration of what not some egg it is the skin penetration of the filary form larva so please remember Enchylostoma duodenal that is hookworm na so that is how you will learn it hookworm will tell you the oo wala eggs and ankylostoma ankylostoma will tell you there is a cutaneous involvement that is going to be seen of the filary form larva that is entering will you be able to identify it very very easily no worries about it yes now if i ask you in a different way what is this last life cycle that i want to show you this is strongest life cycle i call it strongest life cycle why because every possible thing is there in this life cycle what is what does that mean that means ma'am if you try to pick up any kind of life cycle auto infection ho sakta hai, ho sakta hai. is there a direct development of larva possible possible hai. Uh, indirect development wo bhi possible hai. and there is something known as parthenogenesis strongest life cycle matlab kya hai auto infection everyone knows now from myself to myself only from my body to my body if the infection keeps happening that is auto infection what is direct cycle direct cycle says that one larva changes directly into the other there is no mother father mating one larva into another direct direct larva to larva that is direct cycle what is indirect cycle the larva says first we will become adults mother father then we will again make a larva lamba wala root leke larva banega that is indirect cycle so let's do a recap very simple if i see self to self infection occurring that is auto infection larva to larva developing occurring that is a direct cycle larva to adults then mating then fir se larva that is indirect cycle then what am i left with i am looking like i'm left with parthenogenesis what is parthenogenesis because did you realize yahan pe ma'am worms mein only female is shown where did the male go this is a very very strong guyloids can be a very very strong single parent can be a strong single parent because it is now known that females can also reproduce on their own via asexual reproduction so please remember without fertilization the female is so strong she doesn't need any male for fertilization so ye bahut strong wala cycle tha ma'am sab kuch tha isme it had single parent story also called parthenogenesis direct cycle indirect cycle auto infection everything is there the strong organism is going to be strong guyloids i hope that is okay with everyone because this was all your parasitology life cycles one or two life cycles left actually two more to go quickly tell me ye wala to exact google hai some of you aisa kuch aayega this this random gut feeling that i just now had quickly tell me right what is this i can see some birds over here i can see a mosquito over here i can see a pig over here and then i can see human beings also over here what is this 
okay someone said nipa and some most of you said japanese encephalitis exactly this is a case of japanese encephalitis because if you saw little carefully there was a natural cycle and an amplification cycle that were occurring and now tell me if you called it japanese so what is the mosquito vector that you have thought of the mosquito vector is going to be culex yes natural cycle is going to occur in the ardid birds natural cycle is going to occur in the ardid birds whereas amplification cycle who are the amplifiers the amplifiers are going to be the pigs the amplifiers are going to be pigs so agar ek amplification wala cycle chalega in pigs and there is a natural cycle in the ardid birds and then it can come to humans that is the classical japanese encephalitis caused by culex someone in between said nipa why did you say nipa because that is exactly the last one that i wanted to show you also what is it about nipa virus that you guys should be knowing so please note please note firstly nipa virus what family orthomyxoviridae family paramyxoviridae family picorna viridae which which family are we talking about nipa virus belongs to the yes it belongs to the paramyxoviridae family exactly now tell me something yes very good i was waiting for it ma'am fruit bat and bat wala story has to be there along with that pigs can be there i agree with you pigs are a part of the life cycle but not pigs alone primary emphasis has to be on the fruit bat so fruit bat ke sath agar pig wala story hoga then i agree with you that it is nipa virus but if it is just a pig with a culex mosquito or or there is an ardid bird that is mentioned then it becomes a case of japanese encephalitis so don't get confused between these pigs pigs wala and last thing in the previous cystode family the pig and human being that i told you was tinea solium so these are the pigs that you primarily have to focus on which are very very important and that of course brings us to the end of this particular class also and of course i'll be sharing the pdf with all of you but of course this is the end which was not 81 liners when you sit down and count i think we've done a lot many more Uh, which are there ebola if you want to see someone has asked me as one last doubt if you want to see or uh, pick up ebola i do have a picture of ebola if you quickly want to see it you can actually but uh, there's not something like a life cycle picture that will be given for it because uh, ebola may again you have more of theoretical questions coming up so quickly if you want to see it you can you know that again bats are a reservoir but ebola ka life cycle kyu nahi dete because ebola mein it is mainly human to human transmission ebola is primarily going to come to you as patient secretions right so that is i mean what life cycle will they give you for ebola out there because it's primarily human to human but yeah since you wanted to see it this is what can be there and now that you've asked me a question one last question from my end which is the most virulent strain of ebola which is going to cause infection the most virulent strain of ebola that you have which is the one guys yes yeah and then of course we are going to go in for cat sat on a mat which is your uh, jinx question of course but ebola strain there is something known as the zaire yes the zaire strain is the most virulent one that you have for ebola theek hai that's why i did not tell you the life cycle because primarily it's a human to human secretion based thing that we are going to have finally coming to your end and that is you guys wanted to study cat sat on a mat which is our jinx question and of course we have it because i believe with fingers crossed that if this is what we do this session will be fruitful and then this will come in the paper also what is cat sat on a mat that is cold agglutination test standard agglutination test microscopic agglutination test and we know the mnemonic that is you you are not doing this for learning from me you are doing this as a jinx factor what are those so my is going to be for so my billy so my stands for mycoplasma standard agglutination test is going to be for what that is brucella and microscopic agglutination test is going to be for leptospira so remember cat sat on a mat and you remember my billy so this is going to be for mycoplasma brucella and leptospira leptospira came in the neat exam i just hope this all together comes in this exam and if this does not come then all of this session comes in this exam so this is just our jinx factor which tells me that you guys are as superstitious as i am because you did not let me leave without doing the jinx question right okay so yes that's finally the end of the session so students who are preparing 
studying for INICT this of course also happens to be your all the best class for you without me saying it also I believe that you guys are aware that my blessings are always with you whether we get an opportunity to mention it or not I don't I individually have to say it to you because the fact that we are almost meeting on a regular basis does portray that we are definitely wanting you to get the best result and the best rank possible so take this as a good luck message from my end and I want all of you that in these last one or two days now just keep very calm don't read anything new just be very very focused and pick up only things that you've read right now bus nothing new no extra classes no sleepless nights now last one or two days take a little bit of a relaxed back seat that is important right yes and you all know the basic tips for every exam remain the same be well fed well hydrated well slept and a little bit of overconfidence only to reach the examination hall till you reach the examination hall you have to believe that you have done the best preparation and you are the best once you reach the examination hall once you enter it and once you have the exam paper in front of you on your screen then your overconfidence should go then you should become very very practical read every buzzword read every line but yeah, till the time you reach there you need a little bit of extra motivation a little bit of extra confidence in yourself because you have come this far and you don't want to waste all of that effort just by doubting yourself in the last 24 to 48 hours isn't it so you are definitely going to do well it's I'm like super confident about it. I just want you also to have that confidence in you. So thank you so much for joining in. Good luck guys. God bless you all. And I'm waiting and you know, now once you come out of that, you know, there's going to be a flood of recalls that we are going to bombard you with. So of course, I'll meet you on the other side as well. But yeah, till then, all the very best.